My name is Kim, and I am a 28-year-old woman. I am a single mother of four beautiful children. I have a silly first grader who keeps me laughing. My second grader, who is a gem, makes the world a better place, but she struggles with being bullied. My fourth grader is my only boy. He's a handful and a lot to deal with, and I really have a hard time relating to him. And there's my firstborn, a fifth grader, who is a joy and happens to suffer with a lifelong illness. I know you're already judging me because I told you I am a single mother of four. But first, hear my story. Two years ago, I watched my life flash before my eyes as I witnessed the father of my children being purposely gunned down while we were out at a club. I was 26 years old at the time of this horrific shooting, and honestly, my life has never been the same. I have been depressed for the last two years, and my children have grief and anger issues from losing their father. Life has had its fair share of ups and downs, but a part of me felt like I should have given up a long time ago. I spent my childhood in South Florida and was not raised in a very good environment. Both of my parents were on and off of drugs most of my childhood, and I was the child who helped take care of my brothers and sisters. Since my parents were in and out of jail, my brothers and sisters and I ended up in foster care. When I was 12, we had a decision to make. Did we want to stay in South Florida, or did we want to move to Gainesville, Georgia? We decided to move to Gainesville, Georgia, and I was thankful for two years for the opportunity of being a normal child. I went to school, had friends, and even got an education. It was the December of my eighth grade year when my mom decided that she wanted to be a real mom. She came to Gainesville, and that's when my whole world changed. You see, she wanted to come and play the role of being a mom. But then she got a boyfriend. Once she got a boyfriend, our worlds changed again. You see, she was never home, so I started doing my own thing. I dropped out of eighth grade and started figuring out what it meant to be an adult on my own. You guessed it, I was hanging out with a group of friends who may not have been the best for me. And then, at the young age of 14, I met my future husband, and the fairy tale that you see on television began. Well, for me, it felt like a fairy tale. Now, I know many of you are thinking and wondering, where was grandma, where was auntie, where were my cousins that cared? Yes, they were around, but I did not feel like they cared. I didn't think they cared because I was doing what mama did and what grandma did. And I think they call it something like a generational cycle. Did you hear the part when I stated that I had dropped out of school? Yes, I dropped out of eighth grade. I do not have a high school diploma. So every night I am trying to help my first grader, my second grader, my fourth grader, and my fifth grader with homework. And it is so hard. I cannot help them because I am struggling myself. Their teachers and counselors tell me that if they cannot read by third grade, they are building a prison cell for them to live in. I do not want my children to be an, a part of another statistic. So that's why I'm standing here in Walmart parking lot or in your church parking lot or possibly in the United Way parking lot asking people for help. The truth is I am not homeless. I do live in a home in low-income housing or some of you may call it the projects.
I do work a full-time job at a local fast food restaurant where I make $9.50 an hour. And trust me and believe when I tell you that I need to make more money. I would like to work another job, but I need to be home for when my children get off the bus because of the environment that we live in. Although I feel like I'm alone sometimes, I know that God is with me. You know, one of the foster families that we lived with for a while taught me about Jesus and all that Jesus continues to do for our lives. I remember this one family telling me the parable of the Good Samaritan. The dad of the family told me that a parable is a story to teach you a lesson. The parable of the Good Samaritan is one that we would all say that we are familiar with. It starts with the lawyer who stood up to question Jesus and asked, what must we do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Now, if loving God wasn't everything, Jesus went on to say, to love your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus continues to tell them a parable that includes four characters. A man was walking from Jerusalem to Jericho and was robbed and stripped of everything. He was beaten and the robbers left him for dead. We know that the priest was going down the same road and passed the man on the other side. The Levite came to the place where the man lay, saw him, and then passed the man also on the other side. Now, due to the laws of uncleanliness, the man, the priest, and the Levite were not able to touch the bloody, bruised, and broken man. Now, I can't help but wonder at the thought that a man is lying on the ground, broken and bruised, and two people walk by him and do not help him. Do you know people in your life who, like this man, has been beaten up by life? Maybe it stems from their home life. Maybe it stems from not having family members to take care of them. And some of us even would say it's their own fault because they don't want to do better. Do you tend to walk on the other side of the street? Are you living in fear that you are afraid of loving your neighbor? Or are you like the third person in the parable? I love that part of the story that talks about the Samaritan. A Samaritan comes by and saw the man. The Samaritan went to the man and bandaged his wounds, poured oil on him and wine on the man. The Samaritan did not leave him or walk past him, but he put him on his own donkey and took care of him. What a courageous act. You know, I... I, Kim, have felt like the beaten man in the story. However, Miss Deborah has been a good Samaritan to me. She saw me out at the Walmart parking lot and at church struggling. I even walked up to her and I didn't ask her for money. I know that when many of you see people like me, you automatically think that we need money. We're asking for a handout. Well, after I humbled myself, I asked Miss Deborah for a hand up. I asked her if she would help me find a person to help me tutor my child. I also asked her to help me know and find someone to be a male role model for my son. And yes, I was quite embarrassed to ask her for the help, but I didn't want my children to be another statistic. So Miss Deborah introduced me to a woman named Miss Connie. Miss Connie would become my godmother through uh, the St. Paul United Methodist uh, Church's Godmothers Program, and I would be Miss Connie's mentor. For the past few months, Miss Connie allowed her faith to overcome her fears. And Miss Connie has been texting me, taking me to lunch, sending my children and I cards in the mail, and giving me hope for a future. Miss Connie has helped provide 
resources so that my son could have a mentor. You see, Ms. Connie has helped me see light and realize what it means to be a supportive mother, but also a woman and a mother for my children. You see, I am thankful for Good Samaritans like Miss Deborah and Miss Connie who did not walk past me, yet they took the time to show me Christ. These are women who have reminded me that I, Kim, am a child of God and have shown me how much God loves me. You see, I am not where I want to be, but I thank God daily that I'm not where I used to be. I took a blue marker and I wrote the word love on my palm. There's just something about scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 through 9 that say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and strength. I write love on my hand as a reminder for when I am feeling depressed, when I am feeling angry or not having the best of days, that I, I, Kim, should love my neighbor as myself. Love, love is a word that I heard one of the pastors from St. Paul United Methodist Church preach about. She was preaching about love, forgiveness, and grace. Love, what a beautiful word that encourages all of us. So I ask you, do you love me, a sinner, a motherless daughter, a single mother of four children, a high school dropout, a depressed woman? I hope you do because I love you. You are my neighbor. Friends, just like Kim, we are all a little bit broken. But the last time I checked, broken crayons still color the same. As we minister to our congregations, let us take time out to be still and listen. Love and listen to the stories of the members who get on your nerves. Love and listen to the members who come in smelling like vodka on an early Sunday morning. It is time for us to be the change, be love, and to listen to other people. I am sure that many of you are wondering about how this Godmother's program started at St. Paul United Methodist Church. And I will tell you that it started with building authentic relationships. You see, some of us are so caught up in all that we have to do as leaders in the church that we forget that we need to build authentic relationships with our brothers and sisters who live right in the area of our church. So I stepped out on faith and I partnered with the local housing authority in Gainesville, Georgia, who one, thought that I was not coming back after our first meeting, but I decided that I would show her some commitment. So I, I, I met with the director time after time after time, and she asked me to start coming to the Boys and Girls Club that met in this housing authority each week. And so I was co going to the um, Boys and Girls Club every Tuesday and Wednesday. And I noticed that the kids were building this relationship with me. They loved me coming. Oh, here comes Pastor Angela. And deep down in my mind, I was like, oh, these children are all bad. But, <laughs> but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> And so the kids start, started coming to our vacation Bible school, our Easter egg hunts, and we started building these true relationships. And I noticed that on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as I was hanging out in their area, their mothers would come pick them up from the Boys and Girls Club. And they were asking me questions like, Pastor, do you know how to read our test scores? I, I'm not sure, my ch they say my child is failing. How do I read these scores? And I was thinking to myself, well, I'm a single woman, 
and I don't have any kids. I don't even know how to read the test scores. And so I started asking for women of my church to help me, retired teachers, people that work in the community who knew what was going on in the local schools for resources. And we decided uh, through building relationships with the ladies that I was asking, we came up with the Godmothers program where we take women who uh, go to St. Paul who walk alongside women who live in low-income housing. Now, it is important to talk about what it means to walk alongside someone because you can't go in and tell someone how you think they should live, right? And so during this process, it was very messy. It was messy because I, one, serve across racial appointments, and so most of my members are white. And so the... Uh, low income housing area that we were serving, most of the women look like me. And so I was speaking to uh, ladies from my church saying, it's just like having a conversation with me, except for we've all been through some things. We've all struggled in life. And so this, this part of creating the program was very, very messy because people are very real and they want you to at least step up to the plate and uh, provide some resources on your end to do better. And so uh, 10 women stepped forward and they said that they were interested in being a part of this program. And when we started the program, 11 women agreed to be a part of the ministries. And so we had the mentees, the godmothers, and not only were we impacting the mentees, all of the mentees had children. And so children's lives have been changing because of the work of women who want to walk alongside other women to help them be better mothers. On December the 6th, 2017, we kicked off our Godmothers program at St. Paul. And until this day, we are walking alongside women to create authentic relationships so that they may know the love of Jesus Christ. I pray that you are present with folks in your community, that you listen to them, and that you are judge-free, and that you are love and light to all. To the world, you may be one person. To one person, you may be the world.